A few months ago, I bought the Polaroid's newest camera, the i2. Although the initial reviews were mostly positive, I wanted to use it for a few months before sharing my thoughts. Because my experience with their SX-70 film quickly turned sour a couple of years ago. I was curious to see if they've improved. And more importantly, is it worth a $600 price tag? The looks are undeniable. I love the way it looks. I'm not a fan of its build quality though because I feel like it'll shatter or at the very least stop working if I accidentally drop it. The positive side of that is that it's very light to handle. I did find the buttons could be a bit more tactile because sometimes they feel a bit damp. The feedback isn't always spot on, but I do like the design choices with the wheels on the lens module. You get two of them one to change the aperture or shutter speed or both depending on the mode you're in and another one to change the exposure compensation and both of them have um, soft clicks which is really nice there's a small screen on the side which tells you which mode you're on what's your f-stop your shutter speed how many sheets of film is left in your pack whether you need to charge your camera whether the lens cap is on or to choose different types of film that you can shoot with this camera In terms of the different modes, I like that there are aperture and shutter priority modes. There's a fully manual mode as well. I almost always shoot with aperture priority unless I'm manually metering. Do note that the manual mode doesn't allow you to manually focus. That is still based uh, on the LiDAR autofocus that comes with this camera. The autofocus has been pretty much bang on always uh, except maybe two shots in my entire experience so far and the viewfinder has a lot of information when it comes to focusing like distance markings focus checker and it also tells you if the subject is too close the closest focusing distance for this camera is 40 centimeters which is a little bit further than your sx70 i think sx70 was 26 centimeters <laughs> The lens is actually as good as they say. It does produce some really sharp, contrasty, punchy, colorful images. And comparing it again with my experience shooting the SX-70, the lens is as good if not better in most instances. We already talked about there being a filter thread in the front, so you can use any filter that you like. And it's the, the metering is actually through the lens. I misspoke. Uh, it's not through the lens. It's through the lens module. It's a simple single photo cell that covers about 60% of the field of view of the lens. I think it tries to behave like a center weighted meter, but it's really not. And so for complex lighting situations, basically anything where your frame is not evenly lit, you're better off metering using a manual light meter. Back to the video. Another thing to keep in mind is that even if you meter properly, uh, if the dynamic range of your scene is quite wide, all the information might not be captured in your Polaroid because it's about five or six stops, I think, the Polaroid film's dynamic range, which 
yeah, don't go and compare this with the C41 um, film. Viewfinder is not bang on in the middle, so there is a slight difference between what you frame and what you capture. I do find myself having to move the camera a little bit to the left to get uh, the exact framing. In terms of information inside the viewfinder screen, there's quite a bit uh, of it. What, you know, exposure related information, focus related information, and it even tells you if you're shooting at too slow a shutter speed where um, it'll introduce camera shake. The camera has a tripod mount which comes in handy and a 2.5 millimeter flash port which I have not used. I have used the in-camera flash, however, on a couple of shots, and I found it to be quite evenly filling. The camera is Bluetooth enabled, which can be used to connect to the Polaroid app, and you can control your camera using the app. And you can also use it to update the firmware when needed. Uh, the app is actually quite nice. I've used it a few times to use the timer function or to just press the shutter because the camera's on the tripod and I didn't want to touch the camera and shake it. The connection works seamlessly and it's fast. It's good. Right, it can be the best camera ever, but if the film is not producing good consistent results, what's the point? That is definitely something I was curious to find out, as I said in the beginning. With this camera, you can shoot three different types of Polaroid film, the SX-70, the 600, and the I-Type film. I only shot with the I-Type film for a couple of reasons. First, for the ISO 640, because I remember having to use the tripod quite a bit with the SX-70, which had an ISO of 160, and I wanted to avoid that. And the iType film has, uh, or doesn't have, a battery in the film pack, because the camera has a lithium-ion battery inside that can be recharged. I didn't want to use film packs that have batteries in them, even though it's not going to be used by this camera, and then I have to throw away the packs with the battery inside of them, so I just didn't want to do that. Anyway, when the exposures hit, the film produces beautiful results. Great colors, beautiful contrast. It's really satisfying to look at. And of the half a dozen packs that I've shot, only four individual sheets of Polaroid film have had some form of issues um, inherent to them. And one of that was actually me deliberately pulling out the film right after it was ejected before waiting for the blue layer uh, to set in, which takes about 10 seconds or so. But I'd say that's a great hit rate in terms of the film being robust. But there's all kinds of other things that affect the outcome. And if you know what to look for, I think it's a lot more easier to get good consistent results like proper exposure, ambient light, ambient temperature, where you store your film, like not putting it in, in the freezer, for example. I shot an entire pack in cold weather to realize that anything below 13 degrees Celsius is not ideal. The recommended temperature range is basically 13 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius. Um, so if you shoot below 13 degrees or above 28 degrees, it messes up with the chemical reaction that happens while the film is being developed, and so you end up getting a tint. So if it's colder than 13 degrees, you'll get sort of a cyan tint. If it's warmer, you'll get sort of orangey, warmer tint. So that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, overall, comparing this with my experience shooting the SX-70 film from Polaroid a couple of years ago, the company seems to have improved upon their chemistry quite a lot to where now the results are fairly consistent and the film itself is very robust. Which brings us to the question of whether this camera is good value for money. I prefer Polaroid Films colors compared to Instax, so that's there's already a bias there. And I like having manual control over aperture and shutter speed. Uh, I have used Instax film before. I do like that the results were very consistent, but I didn't quite like the look of the film. It's subjective, uh, you know, you might disagree with me and that's absolutely fine. 
we don't have to like the same thing. I sort of benched the idea of shooting Polaroids a couple of years ago because I didn't like the fact that the film was um, inconsistent and wasn't robust. And I tried Instax, wasn't happy with it. But now I can say that uh, the film is consistent and robust enough that it makes me happy to use. Even though it's $2 a shot, I enjoy taking the camera out and I look forward to shooting with it because I know that I'm gonna get consistent results. And combine that with manual controls and the image quality that this lens produces makes this camera totally worth it for me. And I can safely say that it's gonna stay with me for the foreseeable future. Anyway, that's it. That's it for this video. Uh, if you're looking to buy Polaroid i2 and if you have any specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to address them. But yeah, thank you so much for giving me your time. Take care. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.